Hubert Lenoir and Noemi Leclerc are creative cultural collaborators based in the Canadian province of Quebec. In 2018, the romantic partners each wrote pieces entitled Darlene. For Noemi, Darlene was the name of her acclaimed debut novel published by Quebec Emerique. For Hubert, Darlene was the name of his lushly produced and super cool album, a glam rock opera out via Simone Records, which was one of only 10 Canadian releases shortlisted for the 2018 Players Music Prize. Noemi and Hubert met with me for a chat during the Polaris Music Prize Gala, like literally just after Hubert and his band put on this provocative, confrontational performance during the ceremony at the Carlu in Toronto. They sat down and they chatted with me for like a while. And we discussed how they met, what it means to be a Quebecer who thinks of his province as its own country apart from Canada, gender fluidity and dealing with transphobia and homophobia, the inspiration and story behind both the book and the album, Darlene, and much, much more. With the support of listeners like you who subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it and make flexible monthly pledges at patreon.com slash creative control, plus in-kind support from Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton, This is the 435th episode of Creative Control, featuring the fearless and talented Hubert Lenoir and Noemi Leclerc, with your host, me, Vish Khanna. here in some where are we what, 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 what would you call this area that we're in right now it's a no man's land between uh, <laughs> the uh, production office and the security uh, there yes we're at the Polaris Gala and yeah. uh, you uh, recently performed I'd like you both to introduce yourselves to the people yeah listening. so I'm Noemi I'm the writer of the book Darlene which came with the album that's actually uh, on the short list Polaris 2018. It's nice to meet you, Noemi. Thank you very much for making time. I know it's very hectic. I was surprised that we settled, we scheduled this interview time for now during the gala. Were you surprised that we would be doing this right now? Yeah, I don't know. We, <laughs> we just do it. Uh, uh, we just uh, we just live uh, every second, so we don't think. Uh, You're not thinking about in, it. No, not thinking uh, thinking about the future. That's we right. Just live it. And please introduce yourself. I am uh, Hubert Lenoir, and I um, I wrote the album Darlene, and I also perform uh, the songs on the album. Well, it's a remar- it's a remarkable album, and congratulations on the Thank short you. list. And and also uh, tell me tell us. I think it's by the time people are hearing this, it might have made a bit of news. But your performance was particularly explosive, yeah. and uh, it seemed to be uh, uh, assertive. It seemed like you had something you were trying to put across beyond the songs. You had messages. You were expressing yourself. Tell me what was going on in your mind when you realized that you were going to be playing this thing and that the people of the music industry would be in front of you. What did you want to say to them? I just wanted to, to just perform my songs the way I like to perform them and not change. That's what I do usually because I did a lot of TV sets in Quebec. And what I usually do is I don't change anything. So the, like something I'm, I'm going to do at in a club at midnight or 1 a.m., I'm still going to do the same thing on at this Polaris Gala. So I just don't change that much, but I just perform in the way that I like to perform. But I just see it as I live fast and I live hard, and I, I don't think about it. So now I like to perform in this way. Yeah. But maybe like in a year, it will be completely different. It's just I, these days I'm, I'm digging performing like that whatever you can call it so Hubert how old are you I'm 20 I just turned 24 oh ha- happy birthday well it's like a few weeks ago well, it doesn't matter I, <laughs> I, I didn't it. see you I'm, I'm it, was like, it was a month belated ago belated happy birthday is all Thank I meant you. there yeah because you're saying you, you're living fast you, it sounds like you you feel like life is precious is that why you're you're trying to get as much out of your system now no but I think we uh, like to 
when I say living fast, you can like, I'm not, I'm not uh, doing a parallel to like any rock and roll thing. I'm just talking about we just do, you know, you we don't do think. think that much. We just do. Okay, that's fair. Now, Noemi, mean, tell tell us about the uh, formulation of your of your book because these two things, the album and the book, they're connected, but you wrote them separately. Is that correct? Yeah, we wrote them separately, but together at the same time. So in the same apartment, in the same living room. So we mostly wrote it like probably kind of together, but in sort of a mental way. <laughs> yeah, Tele so. telepathically. So you know, do you know what that means? Like you, you didn't even have to talk. You just yeah. both knew yeah. what the thing was. We were in the same mood actually, and we were at that same time in our life where like nothing made sense. We just had to make sense out of it ourselves, and we decided to do this album, this kind of postmodern opera we like to call it, and it sort of like worked. Everything is making sense right now. Okay. <laughs> so who is Darlene? Um, that's a big question. Uh, given the fact that this is a lot of autobiographical work, I'd say it's kind of everyone my age, but a lot of me. <laughs> You're speaking on behalf of your friends, your generation. My a generation, bit. Yeah, yeah. We don't have a lot of friends because we're always like not home. Our friends are our musicians. Our friends right. are yeah. And are you two are together, so to speak. Yeah. Your partners and... Partners, best friends. Creatively and otherwise? Romantically sometimes. Yes. Yeah, all the time. Sorry. <laughs> Ro <laughs> romantically all the time. So uh, Sexually sometimes. Right. Uh, sometimes. That's the way That's the way it goes. Yeah. yeah that's Thank like you for not making this one of those times, by the way. Yeah. Like, it's nice to have the, a little break. How did you two meet? Do you remember, Hubert? Yeah, we met at a, a concert of my first band. What was your first band called? The Seasons, it was called. The Seasons? Yeah. And you were probably, what, 20, 21? No, no before that, 18. 18, I, oh, okay, wow. Yeah, and she was in the audience. Oh, you, did you see her from the stage? I saw her before, uh, before going on stage in the, um, in the stairs. Okay. No, I mean, do, you, do you remember when you saw Hubert? Yeah, I do. In fact, I was like going to the restrooms and I met him in the doorway of his uh, dressing room. And then I went upstairs and he wasn't really looking at me. I think he was looking at my butt, in fact, because I was going upstairs and I had like those really, really short shorts that was that were on point in 2012. Right. But not anymore. They're not the same. <laughs> she had like very short shorts. <laughs> okay. Um, so sh should we... I don't really want to pry, but were you in fact looking, looking at her? Yes, I was. You were, <laughs> and you could sense and I, it. And, and you you know, I'm not, I'm not that type of person. No, but she, uh, yeah, just, uh, yep, yeah, I was. It was a special occasion. Yeah, I like butts sometimes. Sure, sure, yeah. sometimes, <laughs> sure. Okay, Who so any so any kind. So you meet there. And then uh, you see each other shortly thereafter? Yeah, a lot. And I had a boyfriend. Okay. And I just left him where he were. And we saw each other like every day for two months. You, we know, went, you two did? Yeah. You and yeah, me yeah. and Ibar. And we went. Do you know uh, the Festival d'été uh, in Absolutely. Quebec? Absolutely, yeah. I've been so, there. Yeah. I saw Aerosmith there. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, so... That's the most festival de thé thing you can do. <laughs> I saw, I saw like, like the whalers, and I was there the year. Yeah, Aerosmith and yeah, because like it, festival de thé is like they have big names. Yeah, that's true. And actually, Paul McCartney was uh, playing oh, yeah. right after the uh, the festival de thé, and you know where you saw Aerosmith on the plains, the plains of, of Abraham? Abraham. Yeah, it's so big. It's yes. like huge there, and there were like two hundred people. Two uh, hundred thousand. Yeah, people. Yeah. And for some reason, we just run into each other. Really? And yeah, that in that field. And that's where we we kissed for the first time. Oh my and gosh! Then it never stopped. Sorry, was it during the Paul McCartney show? <laughs> right after. Oh, well, he's a romantic, yeah, pop songwriter yep. as well, and yes. he put you guys <laughs> awesome. in the mood. He's, uh, one of my favorite musicians of all time. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Yep. So your background, so you know him as a musician. And that's how did you get into music, by the way? Uber? Um, just by um, quite late when I was um, 
Like as soon like she saw me performing, I was I wasn't se I wasn't seventeen. I was like maybe uh, nineteen when you saw me perform, right? When we met, eighteen. Oh, okay, yeah. Cause I kind of started at like sixteen, like maybe like six, fifteen, sixteen, playing guitar. I mean, I just saw you. This is the first time I've seen you play live. Yeah. You played how many songs did you just do up there? Well, we did three songs. Three songs. So, uh, at some point uh, during the show, uh, something I alluded to this earlier. Something happened. You went out into the crowd. You smashed a glass. Your bottles. Everything. You were. You were on tables. Very confrontational. Was that what you were like when you were younger? No, not not at all. Okay. I was a very shy kid. I'm still. I'm very shy. But uh, music brings this out of me. But I'm still like, shy in everyday life. But um, it's. At first, when I was performing with with my first band, I was like into. Uh, like mostly like 60s stuff and uh, uh, songwriters like Paul McCartney and Donovan, uh, like little uh, bit of, uh, you know, Anthony John. So I was like more uh, playing guitar, playing piano, writing songs. Yeah, because up here tonight, you were the singer. You primarily... Yeah, I can play guitar, I can play piano, I can play yeah. stuff, but it's, uh, yeah, I, I prefer singing. But I, but in my live concert, like if you see like a full live, I'm playing guitar sometimes. No, I know. It's just I'm just saying based on what I just yeah. saw, you were an in-your-face, you know, like it was Singer. like the Stooges or something. It yeah. was like seeing Iggy Pop all of a sudden yeah. hopping on tables, you know, making fun on some level of this industry event. At one point, you said, uh, "Fuck your American dream. I'm your French Canadian nightmare." Yeah, that's like Alice Cooper level scary. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Because it's like yeah. True. You were trying to, <laughs> were you trying to scare scare people in there? Were you trying to scare no, the people I'm watching? No, I, I don't. I don't think anything I do is scary. Okay. I think everything I do is uh, brings light. I believe so, and I've had the the proof that it does. Right? Because I don't want to scare. I, uh, if if I wanted to, wanted to scare, I would. I don't know. There was a rumor you were going to take your clothes off. Someone thought that. Someone said that to me. I think this guy's going to take his clothes off. That's what was going. Like I'm just telling you, I was standing beside someone. Like show my my, my dick or something. Maybe yeah. I no. You didn't do that. No, I didn't. Maybe I will. I will someday. <laughs> but it's like that. No, no. But uh, I, I think that it's. I don't want to scare them. Like well, I I I don't feel like being me, is scary. And if I'm yeah, I, sometimes I'm I'm aggressive, but I I get I get this aggressive. Aggressivity. Sorry, I'm French. Aggressivity. Is Aggression. That the way? Aggression. Aggression. Yeah. Inside myself that I need to get out sometimes. See, well, I feel like every ten years, some might say seven years, uh, there's a feeling that rock and roll music has become stagnant, like boring, and that someone needs to shake it up. And uh, certainly in the last few years, it feels like rock music is not as popular as. Yeah. Hip hop, yeah. dance music, electronic music. So when I saw you, I thought, here's someone who wants to do something for the form, to make the music better. Like the level. rock music, yeah, better? yeah, yeah. But I don't like genres of music, and I I think that, yeah, what I, the album I just did is rock. On some level, it's also on some level, but it's like if you listen to the album, it's not that rock, and I don't like. I think it's kind of very genre blending album. Well, I, I, I think some of the people that you've been compared to, David Bowie, yeah, Prince, yeah, they, they, these are people that certainly you never knew what they were going to do yeah, next. Yeah, and like still like David Bowie and Prince, they, it, it's not like CCR, you know? No, they, no, exactly. They're still like they they are people that did their thing in their era of yeah. music, yeah. and and like I don't know if like you take. Prince today, who knows what kind of music he'll be making? He, he probably be making wonderful music, but like I don't, because I don't want to uh, be uh, the type of person. Because I know there's like a lot of musicians like, oh, I'm gonna bring back rock and roll, old, old school sure, rock, right. and I'm not like I don't care for no, that. No, I, all yeah, I mean, no, I didn't mean. I, that, I that didn't. I, I understand why you would say that. I feel like. All, not even just rock. Sometimes there's a feeling among younger people. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, true. It's same same thing. Like it, 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 I don't like when rappers say, "Oh, I'm bringing back the old school hip hop." Yes, I, exactly. I just like fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Don't say that. There's a there's a sense though that that younger, it's just what old people are afraid of. I'm older than you, so there's a feeling that, oh, uh, these guys must think rock is complacent or music is complacent. 
And when I saw your energy, when I saw what you were doing, I thought he's trying to shake it up. Like yeah. something yeah. is boring and simple, but you're saying that's not necessarily your, what you're after here. Marc-Andre. Who just walked by? What? Who was that? Uh, it's a Quebec journalist. Oh, he's in the jury. Yeah. So he's in the, we're at the, they might have, yeah, that's awkward, right? Because he has to be like, oh, yeah, he knows. They already decided, as we're speaking, they know who won. Oh, yeah? They made a decision. So we're right in the lion's den here. Anyway, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> no, I mean, we were talking about Hubert's musical influence, his background. What's your background? Like you wrote this book. Have you ever done anything like that before? Absolutely not. I went to school and I chose literature. Oh, I did too. But I didn't like it. Oh, so I, I dropped it. Oh, okay. And I went in <laughs> cinema. Oh. Yeah, and I loved it. Okay. So. Where'd you go to school? In Quebec City, you, we call that a cégep, cégep Garneau. But I don't know how you call it here. Oh, okay. I it's don't. a really Quebec thing. Okay. And yeah, that's that's about it. I'm I'm 22 years old, so I went to high school, and then I met Hubert, and then I began loving music and everything that's close to it. And I film, yeah, like film, film a lot. Yeah. And I've always been kind of good at writing, but never liked the fact, like the actual writing, because it's kind of boring being alone on your computer solitary work yeah really you're a lot. just by yourself and you see musicians you see them like jam and perform and they're all together and they it seems like it's so emotional and, and it's love and you have communication in with the, the audience and it's like so amazing when you compare that to someone alone on his computer writing like 250 pages yeah of a novel so it took a long time but i finally did it because I was doing it with him, so there was communication. Yeah, you have the yeah, yeah, something the chemistry. great about it. Mm-hmm. That's very rare <laughs> to have uh, uh, an author collaborate on a novel. Yeah. So can we just unpack the connection between the book and the album on some level? Because my understanding is you'd come up with some passages, mm-hmm. take them to Hubert. Hubert would be like, well, why don't you try this? That seems good, but why not take the character in this direction? Is that accurate? Like, did you kind of work that way? Actually, not. We're kind of um, we're kind of soulmates, us two. We like to say that. I know people don't often believe us, but I I'm pretty sure it's true. And we like to see the book and the album as the same way. Like, they're soulmates. They can live alone. They can live on their own, but they're really better together. So they they have the same teams. They're like complementary. They have the same kind of energy and same way of life, the same vision. And that's where they that's where they meet. They meet in those like bet- in between the lines. There's no there's no moment in the in the album when you when you hear a, a phrase, a sentence. Sorry. Yeah. That's like from the book. This does not happen. Oh, there's no overlap in terms no. of. No, so it's it's the they're same. They're complementary. Yeah, it's the same themes, yeah. and you, you sometimes, I mean, the point is to read the book, listen to the album, and have a kind of a nostalgia feeling about it when you hear a song or think of it, think of that part of the book, that part of the story, and it's it's meant to be an emotion, like together. And I think music has this accessibility, like yeah, yeah, this pure emotion that just gets you when you listen to it. You don't need to work for it. And the book, on the other end, got this kind of thing where you it's just deeper. Mm-hmm. Like you think of it maybe a year or two years later, and just this moment pops in your head because you're living something. And yeah. Okay. Do you want to expand upon? So you're saying, okay, there's no solid connection between the album and the book. But at the same time, there is, like, the most solid connection. I think if an an author would have worked with a singer or a songwriter together just to make something out of it and just to do a book and an album, it would have not been as great as what we did because 
without even telling each other we're gonna do it it just went this way we didn't inv we didn't choose in fact yeah it, it, it was like it's mostly like in the, the in the themes so uh, that's what i wanted to get at and, and uber you've got the mic now can you expand upon that what are some of the the themes between the two that are either shared or do you want to talk about the record and and again i i know i said this at the top you know who is darlene but i can't help but think that maybe darlene crosses the two i have no idea like there's something yeah. going on yeah true so true. do you mind uh, talking about this well it's to me like darlene in, in in the in the album is not there like i well i say it one time but it's like it's not there that much there's a song called but it's an instrumental piece called darlene darling mm -hmm. on the record which mm -hmm. is uh, but for me i i just didn't want it to talk about it do like a narrative uh writing i just wanted to go like in themes and just but didn't you also somewhere call it a concept album though yeah but yeah. it's like a, it's not like a well you can call it like it's not a concept album but not it's not narrative oh okay it's not a narrative based concept it's like album. i i believe that every song are talking about just like are just related like it, it was like very hard to to put them apart from each other yeah but uh, but it's not it's like more conceptual when you take it because if you have you if like because yeah I, I obviously haven't read the I, the book because you, you don't i haven't you don't read speak. the is the book oh, is the book's not in english right it's in no it, it's it's would like to take it out you know, in english my, but I, it's a great shame of mine i won the french award in grade eight Oh, okay. But then it all went to <laughs> shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. It has to come back. Both of my both my children are in French immersion. Oh yeah. Yeah. So they're oh, both studying. So they're they seven years old and three years old, and they're learning French. So they, you should make them read the book. Wow. Not, not now. Maybe too young for some for some for some uh, is it an scenes. Is it an erotic tale? Not that much, but I wouldn't try for a three years old. <laughs> like uh, I don't know, some some. No, because whatever. <laughs> I, I, anyway, I'm, not, I'm not the good person to to. But there's no, like okay. it's not it's not like for kids. Okay, it's so just like for teenagers, right? Or older than that, like a 20, adults. Uh, a twenty twenty one year old and and, and, and uh, older sixty. A sixty years. year old will oh, yeah. get into it. They okay. can enjoy it. I, I do apologize. I like to be uh, very prepared for my conversations with people, but and I if oh, no, it's you know I have lots of authors on my show and I read their novels and I read their books and I get ready, but. In this case, I, can I even get your book? Like, is it available? How did it come out? No, it, it came out. It came out the same day. Like the same. It it, went, it came out in in a um, library, but it's not out yet in in uh, in English. Is it on a uh, like a publishing house we would know? Like, is it a? I. It's called Quebec Amérique. Okay. Uh, yeah, they got like pretty nice people writing on this, uh, but. You know, maybe uh, Robert Lepage? Yeah, yeah. His book is going out on oh, okay. this. So, big, so, so it's a big deal. You're on a, the yeah. book is doing, is it doing well? Like it, yeah, it's, it's, it's doing actually very well. I think we are on the fourth uh, reimpression. Oh, fourth reprint. Yeah. Oh, amazing. A, a reprint, that's it. So yeah. th that's probably part of his like really big. Uh, success yeah that's it that's <laughs> people are trying to see you know they experience no, the record it's like um like uh, let's say like when i do uh concerts uh when if if for some reason i'm like walking close to the audience after uh some people want me to sign the the album and the book and if noemi's close i'm but you know so yeah. so like people yeah. a lot actually like a lot of people uh, listen to the album and, and read the book. It's it's amazing. And so, how do, have many. you gotten a reception? Like, a, has anyone talked to you about it? About what they see as a connection between sure, the two? Sure, sure. Yes. The like when we get time to talk to people, they they do right. A lot of people listen to the album and then say say to me. So I decided to buy the book and I read the first page and then I was in it, and I didn't want to stop. And it, it and sometimes like people are. They're, they're so cute, but they're like crying and saying like they cried in the book and it changed their lives. Like having Uber, like the fact that Uber is who he is, yeah. having that background with the book plus the music. I think it's part of a, like a total experience that makes people feel better, feel more free, I think. So okay. yeah, I, I really believe it's a book that can be um, 
life changing like I'm talking but uh, yeah I'm proud of it I'm proud of her but I'm proud of the project like I see uh, yeah like young I see that especially like for like young like 15 sometimes like some f uh, that really like digs it and they like crying talking about it so well, it's this awesome. is, so we've talked about how the record doesn't have a narrative now I mean is it possible to describe this novel like to explain what happens in it without giving yeah. too much away obviously sure what's yeah. the story uh, it's uh, it's not long to explain it's just a girl and she wins a contest so she wins three nights in a hotel and then she meets this guy who's in Quebec City like he's, he a, commits he's a singer right uh, no in fact no? he's more of a a lost soul but yeah he, a lost uh, soul. that pl can play piano that can play pla piano, he's but not musician. too well. He's, oh, he's a musician. He's not a singer. Like a sun Sunday musician. Sunday musician. Yeah, Weekend that's musician. It. Weekend. Yeah, okay. And he's in Quebec City to commit suicide by jumping down the Montmorency Falls, which are the, I think, yeah, they are the higher falls in North America. So that's it. That's the story. That's the story. Uh, yeah, and she decides to, to l learn him learn to him how to swim teach him how to swim teach yeah teach, teach him, him how, to, how swim. to swim in the uh, swimming pool of the hotel no, no hang on a second that's a that sounds like a dark and romantic story uh, yeah. but you i feel like at some point here or maybe i've read it somewhere else did you not say this is a, a biographical or autobiographical story about you two on some level yeah, but it don't die at the end. <laughs> Have you had these, like, notions of, like, you mentioned, like, life, you live life hard, like... Yeah, the, uh, no, it's, uh, I don't want to go, like, in that part, path, because it's, like, it, it depends, but uh, I, I, I would... Are you okay? I, 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 my, yeah, it's yeah, a concern yeah. thing. I just... No, no, no. I, when you say it's biographical and autobiographical... And no, it's more like... We when we f but the, the yeah when we met we had this kind of constant obsession with death. The both we talk both, both yeah. of you did. So that's like the um, yeah. You're going deep. Well, when yeah, you, yeah, I well, want to keep some. I want to. I want to have fun tonight. Please. No, we are having. We are having fun. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun record. Yeah, it's I don't a fun know. Record. It's a it's a fun book too. Very funny. So does so I know you've already said they're separate, but do you address any of the same? sorts of ideas in your on your record oh yeah there's some um thing a few times about but but anyway th i don't think the book is talking about death like death is not the but there but there's a part where uh How it says it, wait, wait a minute the, 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 the one of the main characters has traveled to quebec to, to, to yeah but that's like these things you you make it a big deal if you want to make it a big deal in in the book the character doesn't make it a big deal and nobody gives it like neither Darlene uh, is making it a big deal. Well, death is part of life, so that's the big thing. You live yeah. life to the fullest, and you know you do that. I think. Yeah, but like, in the, you know, it's not going to be forever. But like, in a, in a way, um, there's a line on the song called "Ton Hotel" on on the record, which I say, uh, "La mort ne fera pas mal si on va droit au ciel," which you can translate it to, uh, "Death won't hurt if we go straight to heaven," and it's like, like a direct ref reference. But anyway, it's not like. We see death as a way of like reborn, you know, more than just death, death. You know. Well, so <laughs> here's my other question for you, Noemi, because you were saying that you feel like your book, and perhaps this character, is a reflection of your friends and your generation, mm -hmm. and you have nothing to compare this to. I just wonder if you feel like death is more on your minds. Again, we're here. We'll have a good time. Yeah. We're here to party. <laughs> Everything's fine. But when you talk about your generation, I feel like there is some existential angst, you yep. know, a concern about the future that I don't remember having when I was your age as much. I didn't start thinking about this stuff very seriously, to be honest, until very recently my mom got sick. And then I started to realize, oh, mm. this is coming for me. It's coming for everyone. So I just wonder if you can generalize. Yeah. Do you feel like among your generation, this is a greater, this is on your minds more than maybe it should be, uh, or more than we all realize? 
I don't know. Don't we don't we live with more passion if we know we're gonna die? We are all going to die. But some people don't know it, obviously. Some people live their life like like they're never gonna die. Like they're gonna do that for like forever, for eternity. You mean like they don't live as passionately as they should? Yeah. They spend their time doing stupid, boring things. Yeah, but in on the other end, as you said, yeah, I think we're more our people, our generation. We're more we're more conscious about that. But it's part of being lost too, and it's part of being so individual, so not into the moment, so in foreseeing what's gonna come. Yeah, it's part of yeah. You said the next, and I I feel like in my mom's time or in my grandparents' time. There was movements. There was people were part of something, and now you can be part of something, but so far from everybody. Because of social media and things. Yeah, and everything else. I think everybody's, even if it wasn't about with the social media. I think we've we've we had found a way of being more individualized. So yeah. Uber, do you feel? Again, I don't mean to ask you to generalize, but do you kind of feel like people experience real things less than maybe they did in according to history books like 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 what Noemi is saying like you can watch a live stream of this thing we're at now and feel like you're part of it, but you're not really. You're not you're at home. You're not you didn't go to the show. You didn't go out and Yeah, look. yeah. Obviously, like talking about this is is uh tricky because I don't want to to be the um, type of person bashing the new generation which I'm mine obviously do you mean mine specifically oh no oh, no, oh the, the younger generation like oh, the new, younger oh. which were kind of oh I'm sorry a yeah. part of it yeah. or like yeah your generation or like maybe like even younger than yeah, us sure. uh, but sorry. it's but it but yeah I think it it changed and it evolved a little uh, but now I don't know now kids these days are just into different stuff yeah. and they they're experimenting differently uh, but I just think they need to to um, to think free and like stay o- open minded about like that's like the worst like I don't mind like new technologies and like st- live stream and stuff but uh, I just think that you need to always like be woke and not not be like um uh, Because like these things, like smartphones and stuff, they, they can be uh, very um, alienating. Alienating, I think. Al- that oh yes, I, 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 I had it good. You did it, yeah. You did Perfect. it right, yeah. Alienating. Yeah. Hey, would I, you like some wine? Would I like some wine? Yeah. Are you going to get wine? Yeah. Would you like to? I'm. I don't drink wine. Oh, okay. But sorry. you can go get some if you want. Yeah. We do. Do you, you need some like wine I, now? I haven't like I haven't had a glass since. Do my you mind, Noemi? Mean, we'll just keep talking yeah, a little yeah, bit. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's very nice. That was you. You need wine all of a sudden in the middle of the interview? No, because I was like, no, no. I was. I was <laughs> just. I was just. Yeah. I. I, I just like. I'd like to get. A you need a little. Does yeah, it center I, I, you a little? I haven't like. I. I haven't drink nothing since the. I see. On, and so I was like. So that performance, how I was going to ask you how, because one of the controversies that occurred for you was, you were talking about Quebec TV. Yeah. You were on a Quebec TV show back in May of 2018, right? Yeah. Yeah. This summer, just for yeah, last. Yeah, no, no more like spring. Spring. spring, spring sorry. Yeah, yeah May. Yeah. So, uh, so, what happened exactly? Something happened, and it made the news, right? Well, it, it not not. I don't think it's a precise thing that happened, but I showed my. Well, at first I was like moving around, dancing, uh, in the kind of same way that I did tonight. But uh, at the end, I I showed my um, my uh, butt, a part of my butt that has the the fleur de lis, like the with that with the sperm, Literally, yeah. with the sperm shit. It was ejaculating. Ejaculating. Yeah. So uh, what so that's it, what I did. Is that a common image in Quebec that I'm not aware of? The fleur de lis ejaculating. No, no, it's it's uh, we. Custom figured, job? We figured that out. <laughs> you, you and Noemi figured it yeah, out together. Yeah, okay. a while ago. What does that indicate to you that the fleur de lis, the symbol of Quebec, is is coming? It's coming. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I, I just think it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, express. Yeah, it's coming. That's, it's just that's coming. True. It's coming, <laughs> and it's it's coming to you, and it's it's like 
it's coming out into the world and it's just it's just kind of the way we see our creation and our art is like i just because there's like this thing about being french canadian or i don't like that much like the term that much french canadian even though i said it tonight but yeah, yeah. it's like i, I prefer quebecer because i don't f feel canadian you don't feel canadian no are you something of a separatist oh yeah of course yeah. you think quebec should be its own yeah okay why yeah. is that because i don't think it's I, i think it's totally different country i think Can i love canada like it's one of my favorite country like yeah. it's it's probably canada is probably my second favorite country after quebec Like, okay okay like i love it but i just think it's different hmm. i just think like culturally i, it's I different. agree with you when i go to quebec i feel like i'm not in yeah it's just like it's not the same place i it's don't feel like when language. i'm in nova scotia it feels like canada yeah it's true, sometimes when true I'm that I, th i i feel like again i don't want to talk like well like nova scotia maybe like new brunswick feels different new brunswick is kind of like quebec some of it I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I, I yeah. don't want to get it too. Po anyway, like the goal is not to be political, and I never talk too politically about like s separatists because it's like I just want to keep it about the art. And I think that when you mix politics with music and art, I think just a, it's not it's not a good. But you, so wait a minute, just so I'm clear here, tonight, as I alluded to earlier. You went on stage, you were doing your songs, at some point you screamed, fuck the American dream. Fuck your American fuck dream. Fuck your, what is that? <laughs> okay, fuck your American dream. I'm your French Canadian. I'm sorry, I'm your French Canadian yeah. nightmare. So that sounds like you were drawing lines between people and countries and places. True. Some yeah. could say that was a political statement. What does fuck yeah. your American dream even mean? Not the American dream, which we've all come to understand is a phenomenon i believe that i i because it's like the american dream is like the obvious like everybody has this american dream i was like referring not not necessarily referring to like america as a country but everybody like with globalization yeah 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 everybody wants to be america like if i was like we were in paris like in switzerland yesterday actually we were in switzerland yesterday yeah just yeah. today amazing right wow you got here Yep, good time. Yep. That's <laughs> on time. Uh, and we're, we're in Germany tomorrow. So you're really you're going back? Yeah. You came back just for this? Yeah, that's it. Or came back, came back for this. So for this. okay, so this as much as you seem contrary and sort of anti the event, I thought this is my reading. You can say you're not, but people oh. people don't see con confrontational performances like that at this award show. Okay. Most artists come here and they want to make a good impression they don't want to ruffle too many feathers you know okay make anyone too uncomfortable because a lot of the music industry in this country is gathered together journalists whatever you seem to come here all the way from switzerland before you go back to germany to make some sort of point i don't know i don't see it as being confrontational i just i i just don't I, i'm you always gonna got up on tables and you smashed yeah. a glass and you're chugging wine or whatever it was champagne yeah but it's like i I don't I don't like yeah I'm always going to be a little confrontational Aha! to any sort of establishment. There you go. That's that's political. What you that's said. political. Yeah. So yeah, you, you got are, me. You are a little But you political. know it's like it's like I don't I just in the way it's, I I just don't want to be the type of person to go out and just like state some uh political the, uh, thing the and, you know, I, I'm like I'm it. with you on this because once you state Uh, take a position people expect you to be in that position always yeah which closes you off to change yeah I just want to leave it to the you know like what I did to, like tonight what I said I'm not gonna like I know like I'll be back in Quebec soon and people are gonna ask me why you said that I'm not gonna justify myself I just I said it interpret it as you will but Okay. It's like, you know, so it's, it's like, I just say it, but uh, as we said before, like, we don't, we, I don't think that much. I just say it. But you're not, you don't seem like anarchist. You don't seem like nihilist to me. You seem like you care about what you're saying. And I that care. you have a point of view. Yeah, I care. But you're saying that the point of view ch changes. 
and it's not you don't want to be held yeah. down. It sh- it changes. Uh, yeah, it changes. But uh, this Quebec show that you were on. Yeah. We were talking about the TV appearance oh, that, that caused the news stuff. This show that you're on would have artists like you normally be on that show? No. What kind of show? What was the name of the show? Uh, it's it's like the voice. It's called the voice. It's called La Voice. It's like a translation, uh, but it's it's literally like the voice. Oh, like the American show where yeah, it's like with a the, contest. The chair. It's moving. Yeah. Oh, were you a contestant on that? No, show? no, no. I was just like performing. Like uh, performing at the final. So everyone else is singing like a pop song or... Yeah, but like, you know, there's the contestants. Yeah. And there's like some... Like in any any The Voice... Perf- like uh, there's like some guests. Oh, that like was a, part of one of the guests. The guests. Because somebody canceled a uh, week. So they called me to be a part of it. And were you surprised? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like... I don't like like we don't endorse this type of entertainment that much. What right? which like the voice like the, the yeah it's like it's contest? like like it's like not I don't I think there's a lot of bad in this. A lot of wrong, lot of lot of wrong, lot lot of good too. But do you like mean a lot the, of uh, do you do you mean the event we're at tonight even? Is is there a lot? No, no, not tonight. Oh, just you mean the TV show? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, this year you came all the way across the water. Yeah, I would have. I would here. have been there if I didn't care. Right. So my that. So what, are you doing like well in Quebec? Like, do you do rather well for yourself as a performer? Like, did it cause when you were on The Voice? I assume they're not asking a lot of obscure artists to be on a show like yeah, that. Yeah, because a, a song of mine was kind of. Uh, Get, like just like the album was getting some good doing attention, well. yeah, critically, yeah, like everybody seemed to talk about it, so that's why they invited me because I was like the underdog at the time, right? Like so, rising. So you go on the show, your butt cheek is exposed. Yeah, the fleur de lis is coming all over the place. Yeah, and uh, what is the reaction to that in the media uh, or elsewhere? At first, it was like mostly bad. Like if you could see like on Twitter, it was like, so I I, w- I would was going to bed that night, looking at Twitter. I was like, holy shit! Yeah. Like people are freak, like really freaking out. Uh, I woke up and like friends of mine were texting me like, say, oh, the, are you doing okay? Are you like, cause it, it's just like, as if I was like suffering from like uh, intimidation or yeah. it was like. I was like, don't don't worry, I'm fine. Oh, because people were making fun of you. No, not fun. Just oh. like, just like weird, like random people saying that I was a piece of shit. But oh, it's like, who okay. cares? Uh, but the, and then like during the day, there was kind of this debate whether it was I was a hero or a piece of shit in the media. Right. And it went for weeks. Weeks. It went on for weeks. Oh, a week, months. Did you have to make like a statement or something? I just said I just post one time I don't need to justify myself to uh, I don't know how I put it out okay, but like okay. any homophobic uh, fuck y'all and right because there was some homophobia involved in yeah just yeah right yeah okay because it was you, like mostly homophobic stuff because you yourself explore or, or like uh, transphobia or something transphobia you yourself explore I, how do you identify by the way uh, I identify myself as a male individual with okay. a penis, right. but I like I, I would say I'm, I'm like I don't know I don't like labels like gender fluid sure. or just like okay. uh, but yeah I'm i i but I'm I yeah I, I feel yeah I'm a male individual but okay. uh, like not I don't feel like a a guy a boy right no not I'm, that much no some, I'm, some days some days I, I do but right no I mean how do you identify yourself if I might, if I might ask I'm just curious I, I'm kind of uh, like him I sometimes wake up and I feel like a boy and he dresses with my clothes and I dress with his and yeah we don't I don't I haven't had any girlfriends in my life and he had a lot of girlfriends and I don't know we just don't think the fact that what you have in between your legs should define everything else okay that's, that's it. it is it difficult to live in your community feeling this way do you feel like you, a man. lot of people are like minded oh, yeah. <laughs> somebody's somebody's voting for you I don't know if that's an official jury member or not 
Is it? I don't think so. <laughs> is it? Is it okay? Like, are you comfortable living where you are, feeling the way you feel? And oh yeah, it's it's all right. Uh, it's yeah yeah. Uh, we are blessed to be all right with this, uh, but I but we know that. I mean, I I'm looking like a girl. I act yeah. like a girl, and you know, I come from a very like conventional family, so I don't feel persecuted. Yeah. About this. Yeah. And the fact that Ibar is kind of like gender fluid and very more uh, into it, like very more um, kind, it appears to me and to everyone else that he's not only like a boy yeah he's not a boy right know? and but he he goes out with me and we don't we don't like we don't even like to label ourselves as a couple we're not a couple we're best friends okay and that's it. right i i didn't mean to be nosy by asking oh, not at all not at all i appreciate i could tell you were trying to answer in a sort of unconventional way yeah no it's it's just like but I, th I still think that um, sexual identity, and that's part of my, of our, but like publicly what I say is, is just, you should just do how you feel. And I, I feel a certain way about myself. Right. But I see people, boys or girls, like shaved girls or whatever, like any, any type of people in my audience uh, or and normal people yeah older people younger people and it's just to me i just think you should just do how you feel and if someday like who knows who knows if i'm gonna be a woman someday yeah. like a full yeah. woman who knows if someday i'm just gonna tend to feel more like a man yeah like we don't know exactly we don't know and and, and it's 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 just I, I, I think it's it's like who cares and like it's just how it's all about being free. Now you mentioned that the album is a kind of a, a would you say a rock opera? I say a postmodern opera. I don't like post, the term rock. Okay, postmodern, postmodern opera. You have a book. There seems to be a and you're interested in film. Is there some kind of future for Darlene beyond its current? You don't want to talk about it yet. There's some maybe like in ten years, but for now there's on, something going on. I could tell there's a plan. You whispered. No, Emma whispered something off mic. Like, no, if we if we get like off Broadway show or a I, Broadway, that's it. You got it. I, I like I like to get a, 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 a like a full Broadway like a, a residency, yes. like in in New York, where yes. you can like perform it like all year long. That that could be cool. Like th we're always open to these type of stuff because I, I think that we both really believe that a piece of work of art is it lives on forever and it's bigger than yourself. And that's what we did with Darlene. And that's why like I've on the record cover is like Darlene by Hubert Lenoir because it's like this lives on and it's like I kind of sung it. I sing the song on the record, but like somebody else can sing them. Yeah. And so this lives on. And if somebody else wanted to adapt it in some way, we're always open to anything. But no, I've just, I, I didn't want to make sh any shows at first for this. So I've been touring a lot. So I'm just really can't wait to go on to something else cre creatively. I was so going to ask if you had started working together on, on something else. No, I mean, can you speak to uh, that? Not There's necessarily like together no, no. in, in okay. this way. Yeah. She, like she's always the person that she's the person that affects me the most creatively for sure. So I was going to always want her opinion on anything, but I've, I've been working on new music. I'm working on a soundtrack for a, a film of a great director in Quebec called Anne Aimon. Okay. She's a great director. I'm working on the, the soundtrack for a movie and working on music all the time and working on, on stuff and always, you know, I, as soon as I get a day off, I we, we book a studio. Okay, so there's, there's more coming, right? 
I yeah, know, more no, comment. No, I mean, so that was Uber. Are, do you have? Are you working on something else? I'm working with on him. him. Yeah, you're working with, on him. Yeah, she's my manager. Trying she's, to fix you. Well, she's my manager. Right. So, so you're well, actually your hands are full, making sure he doesn't climb on tables, smash glasses, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Good no. job tonight, by the way. Making sure I do it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right. Because right. sometimes I because sometimes I say, oh, no, I'm not going to do it tonight, and she says, like, come on, do it. No, it's not discipline. Good. But what about what about writing though? I'm thinking about it. Okay. Those last few months were so intense that it. I was surprised, but it got me writing. Yeah. Not that. Not the kind of stuff like I do without discipline, and I did it. So yeah. Okay. Will will happen. Excellent. So where can people go to learn more about you on the uh, internet or online? They can go on the website of Darlene. It's called DarleneDarling.com. Right. And they can go on my Instagram. Uh, it's called Le Baron Bandi. Le Baron Bandi. Okay. And uh, they can, uh, yeah. So Instagram mostly, Facebook sometimes, Twitter not that much. Okay. So uh, yeah, but the website and mostly like Instagram is where I kind of keep people updated. And you're going on tour, everything. You're just going to be. Moving yeah. Along. Well, we are finishing this kind of festival season tour we're going to Germany tomorrow and we're then gonna be back in Quebec to do some stuff but I don't know what stuff I gotta be working on like music mostly then going back on tour in, in fall then recording the soundtrack in Christmas time around Christmas time oh, okay okay so then I'll just like keeping myself busy and always kind of keeping some time to come back to Toronto and come back to talk to uh, to you guys like it's because it's for you us you don't make it to Ontario too much right that uh, we've only been there like once for like few hours to do some interviews like one time you've been to Ontario once before today no like uh, before with my band oh, but, oh, but oh, like for this project yeah so we would like probably uh, we would like to uh, give it some more time and probably we would love to book a show this fall in Toronto. Okay. We'll put the word out and see if that can happen. Yeah, yeah. And, and just, like, keep... Because for us, like, music, like, even though it's in French, like, music is an international Absolutely. language. No, I mean, I've been listening to your record a lot. And, like, Thank uh, you. my French is sort of weaker than it should be. Whoa. But I love it. Like, I, I, yeah, I, feel, and who I can, can feel it. So, yeah. And we have, like, some good, like, vibes in the, in the United Absolutely. States, too. So, yeah. like, maybe, oh, like, go, go yeah. in the States, too. So, it's, like... Whatever happens will happen. Okay. The American dream. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, <laughs> fuck your American dream, but I, I could get, I'd love to like experience it for, <laughs> for a night, maybe. Getting a little hypocrisy on my microphone. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Noemi, can you pick a song? I want to play a song from Darlene. Yeah. From, for the rec from the record for people mm -hmm. to hear. Do you mind picking a song? Uh, you want me to choose? Anything you want. My favorite, maybe? Well, sure. Okay. I'm gonna choose my favorite, so you have you'll have to play an instrumental song. I'm sorry. That's fine. And it's gonna be Momo. Okay. Because I think it's the perfect song to begin, like the greatest the greatest movie you've ever seen. Oh right. Okay. And it just finishes the way every movie Wait, should Momo. finish. Because it's the place I grew up in. It's a really really small town, like not a town. How you call it? It's like a neighborhood in yeah. Quebec City. Called, uh, it's called yeah. Montmorency. Okay. Because it's right next to the Montmorency Falls, which Ashton wants to jump off. And she grew up there. I, I grew up in the, in the neighborhood right up in called Courville. But I knew, like, I knew Montmorency all my life. And Momo is, is the way you call it in the, like, the street slang. Oh, okay. Because it's like, it's like a, I would say, like, rough neighborhood. Can you call it? Like, it's rough. Okay. It's a rough neighborhood. So like the like the hood way to say it is like Momo. Momo. Like I I've, I've got to buy some uh, amphetamines in Momo. Mo okay. I, to say it. I like to say something. You're you're really you're really good at what you do. Oh, thank like, you. Like this was yeah. I'm always there when he does interviews. This was one of the greatest interviews. Oh. You're like spontaneous plus really yeah. prepared and the questions are good and I like everything about it. Oh, thank you. That's very <laughs> yeah, kind. Yeah, I, I, I want to say like it's it's been 
Like we never do that, but like it's been awesome. Oh, thank you talking. so much. Yeah, well, you and, too. And uh, can't wait. Like I don't know what is like your media. Yeah. But I can't wait to go back and talk to you s some more. Oh <laughs> yeah. Well, I would love to talk to you again. And thank you. I wish you both the best of luck with everything, and I. I thank this you. This is very flattering. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Pleasure, man. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Very, very special thanks to Noemi and Uber for joining me on this, the 435th episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available on all iOS and Android platforms and also on things like Spotify, YouTube, and Audio Boom as well. If you can't find an episode that you're looking for or if you want to learn more about me and sign up for my regularly scheduled newsletter, please visit my website, vishkana.com. You can like Creative Control on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Vish Creative, or follow me at Vishkana. Also, listen to a radio show version of Creative Control on Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time around the world at CFRU.ca or on an actual radio at 93.3 FM if you're in or near Guelph. Also, please visit patreon.com slash creative control and make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast going. People like you do this uh, quite a bit, and I, I appreciate it. It really helps... Uh, uh, it helps pay the bills. It boosts morale a little bit. It's uh, it's nice to know you're out there and supporting the show in that way. So again, patreon.com slash creative control. I'd like to thank uh, Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, Planet Bean Coffee, and Granddad's Donuts for their in-kind support of the show. I just had, my family and I, that is, a dozen Granddad's Donuts when I was in Hamilton recently. And uh, it was a lot of donuts, I have to say. Uh, I didn't eat them all, but it just, it's just, I, I, maybe too much. I just, I don't get to go too often to get the donuts. So when I go, I ask for a dozen and I custom order them because I like the walnut crunches and the orange twists the best. My wife likes the, the apple fritters, but I don't, I don't care about those. Still, I get them for her. And then, yeah, I don't know. I'm feeling full still. it was. I think we finished the last one a couple days ago. I'm still a little full. Anyway, Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton is awesome and all my... Uh, uh, love and, and thanks to all the in-kind support I received from uh, those aforementioned businesses. And speaking of uh, businesses, my little businessman friend, Jim Guthrie, lets me use uh, a song of his, The Rest Is Yet To Come, to end this show each week. So uh, thank you, Jim, very much. You can learn more about Jim and his instrumental music and his uh, uh, vocal-oriented music at jimguthrie.org. And finally, thank you for listening to this program and telling your friends to do the same, and for subscribing to the podcast on whatever thing you use. Uh, All that means a lot, and I appreciate you uh, keeping tabs on me, and I'll continue to do this for as long as is humanly possible. I will talk to you very soon. Goodbye for now.